Hey guys, um, I just wanted to show you real quick the basics of working with Onshape. So assuming you've been able to create your Onshape account, you should see something like this. Um, a few few things real quick that are uh, nice to see. Onshape is really good with sharing documents. So if you want to work with a partner on a project, um, you can share stuff pretty easily. Onshape also keeps a public library of stuff that people have worked on. If you've got a free account with Onshape, all your designs are released publicly. Um, if you want to keep your designs private, uh, you have to pay for their service. So if you want to create a design in Onshape, I'll try the big button that says Onshape. I'm going to create a document here and just kind of walk through making uh, a project we should be familiar with. I'm going to make a stool. Uh, so that's going to create a workspace here and just uh, introducing you to a couple things in this workspace. Um, this is a 3D drawing tool. Uh, so Onshape starts with three default planes. A plane is just like a flat surface. And so typically, if we're you know creating something, this corresponds to the front face of that thing, the top, the right face, and the top face. Um, this little magic cube up here, if you click and drag that, um, it'll let you align different parts of this um, sketch. Uh, if you right click and drag, that'll pan around, that'll rotate things around. Uh, if you hold shift and click, you can select stuff. Um, scrolling will zoom in and out. And holding control while right clicking will let you click and drag stuff. Um, this cube down here will let you reset your view. So there's a couple of different types of views and we can talk about what those different types of views mean, but for right now it just resets your view. So say I want to create something. Um, say I want to create a, a design for my stool. Uh, every design in CAD tools starts with a two-dimensional sketch. And so there's a tool here for sketching. Um, so I'm going to click sketch. It's going to ask you for a sketch plane and typically we're going to choose one of these three default planes. So I'm going to sketch my stool looking from uh, the top down. So I want to select this top plane and you'll see that'll create a big uh, sketch here. Now I'm going to rotate my cube around so I'm just looking at the top. Scroll to zoom out and I'm going to start sketching um, say the top view of my stool. Uh, so if I'm, if I'm looking at the seat of the stool uh, it's going to be either square or rectangle um, if, if I'm just doing a simple stool. Um, you'll see up here there are a whole bunch of tools for sketching, um, drawing lines, rectangles, circles, arcs, which are just parts of circles, uh, polygons, uh, splines are just curves, um, and we can do points, and we can do text. And there's a bunch of other stuff here that we'll talk about at some point. So if I'm sketching my stool, I'm going to start with a rectangle. So I'm going to click the center uh, origin here and drag my rectangle till it's about, I don't know, close to how big I want it. Now I've made this exactly at the origin, so that's, that's going to attach the center of my rectangle to this origin so that my rectangle is kind of fixed in location. Now we've looked at, you know, different dimensions and sizes, what, what makes a good stool. Um, if I want to set the size of these different sides. I could like click and drag this and try to guess how big my chair, my stool should be. Uh, but there's also a tool called a dimension tool. A dimension when I'm talking about sketches is a way to specify the size of something. And if you mouse over any of these tools, there should be a little pop-up menu that uh, tells you all about this tool and how to use it. So I'm going to click dimension. And I'm going to say I want my stool to be 15 by 15. And so what I can do this is click aside, click over next to it in the empty space, and type in uh, 15, and that's going to change that size length to be 15 inches. And I can do the same thing for this other side. And so now I've got a 15 by 15 square. Uh, that's going to represent the seat of my stool. Um, I'm, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to sketch the legs of my stool here. Um, and so if I were looking at this from the top down, if I had x-ray vision and could see through the top of the stool, I might see that I have um, legs here at the corner. And so I'm, I can use a center point rectangle, but if I hit this little drop down box, uh, there's other options for making a rectangle. So I'm going to make a corner rectangle here, and that just lets me go from corner to corner of this rectangle instead of from center to edge. Um, and this is going to be one leg of my stool. And so let's say I'm using a, a 2x4. Um, so I'm going to use my dimension tool. Uh, 2x4 is nominally uh, 1.5 inches 
by 3.5 inches, and eh, maybe more like 1.75. Um, and so that specifies each side of this little rectangle. It's going to represent the leg of my stool. Now, obviously I need four legs for my stool. Um, now I could make three more rectangles here, but there's shortcuts in, the, in this software for doing repeated things that are, are the same. Um, in particular, there's something called a mirror tool. Um, so if I click the mirror tool, it's going to ask me to select a mirror line. And if you've taken geometry, you've studied about transformations, all this is going to be is a reflection over a line. And so let me just reflect all sides of that rectangle, and I get another leg over here. And I can do the same thing in the other direction, get the rest of these legs. And so I selected this horizontal axis, so it's reflecting these shapes over this horizontal line uh, to put my shapes down here. Now the cool thing about this is if I decide that I want to go back to like 1.5 inches, I don't know if you saw that, but it updated all four of these guys. Because these other three legs are made from this first leg using the mirror tool, um, if I update my first thing, it's going to update the rest of them. So I think I got enough to start making a stool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the green check mark to save my sketch. If you click the red X, um, that won't save the changes you've made to your sketch, and you'll lose that. Um, so what I've got on the top plane, and this is going to be the top of my stool, um, is something that looks, should look kind of like the top profile of my stool. So let me make a seat for my stool. I'm going to select all of these parts. And so once I have a 2D sketch, and you just got to click to select the different parts of your sketch. Uh, once you got a 2D sketch, there's a bunch of tools you can use to make something three-dimensional. Uh, so let's say I'm using three-quarter inch plywood for the top of my seat. Um, what I'm going to do is use this tool called an extrude. And if you kind of rotate around and look at that, it's taken that sketch, it's stretched it up, um, and I'm going to stretch that up by a depth of 0.75. That's typical for what uh, type of wood I might be working with. Click the green check mark, and what I've got now is a rectangular prism that represents the seat of my stool. Um, now, once I make it extrude from a sketch, it hides the sketch. I still need to make my legs, and I got my legs sketched where I need them. I'm going to click this little eyeball here to unhide that sketch. And so now if I kind of rotate around to see the bottom of this, I can select those legs. And obviously I want my legs to go down. So I'm going to click the extrude tool. And if you look at that, the arrow indicating what direction the extrude is going is pointing up. Um, we can change that around. You can either click and drag the arrow, or you can click the arrow here, and that'll change the direction that your extrude is going. Um, now there's a couple things to be aware of, and let's say I think 18 inches is a pretty good size for a stool, and so there would be a stool with four legs. Um, but if you look at this, these are all the same colors. Um, there's a couple options here that are kind of useful to be aware of. New, Add, Remove. These are the three that you'll probably use the most. Um, and you'll see that these are all the same colors, because if I'm selecting Add here, it's going to extrude this part and add it to the parts that it's already touching. That'll make this one big part, which is not what I want for this particular design, because if I'm making a stool, the seat and the legs are typically separate pieces that I assemble together later. So the option here for uh, New you see they'll become different colors, makes these all individual parts. Um, there's also an option called Remove, and I bet you can guess what that does. I'm going to switch the direction here. Um, if I click Remove, that's just going to cut away using the, the sketch profile that I'm extruding, which is nice for making like holes and slots and uh, removing material that you don't want in your design. But, but for this design, I'm going to um, add, and let me switch that back around, um, to a depth of 18 inches. Uh, there's also this drop-down menu here. There's a bunch of tricks here to change how far you extrude. Um, symmetric is another handy one to be aware of, because um, that'll extrude uh, in both directions from the sketch. That has a lot of uses. Um, the rest of these are kind of shortcuts. If you're removing and you want to cut through everything, uh, this through all option is pretty good. But if I'm just wanting to set a number for my depth, um, blind is what you want. Hit the green check mark. And there I've got a seat and legs for my stool. Now, this isn't a very good stool, as I'm sure you're well aware of, because um, these legs are going to be wobbly. So I need to add some supports between these legs. 
Uh, and so one thing I can do, like I got my original sketch. Um, if I want to add, let's say, a support between these two legs, what I can do is create a new sketch. And in addition to sketching on the default planes, you can actually sketch directly on a, a flat surface from a part that you made. So I'm, I want to create my sketch on this leg right here. Um, and I'm going to do a corner-to-corner -corner rectangle. And click here. This is going to be that wooden support uh, that's going to connect these legs and stabilize them. Now, you'll see here, like, let me show you. Since I'm sketching on this rectangle, like, I can highlight sides of this rectangle. The sketch knows where that shape is. Um, like, I can start from this corner. But if I go over to this other side, my sketch is not on this rectangle, so I can't snap to the points on that rectangle. Um, so there's a trick I can use. If I click um, this Use tool, uh, if you click this side of the rectangle, it's going to add that to your sketch. And you'll see those lines show up, showing that the points on this face that intersect with my sketch plane are now available to my sketch. And so if I now make my corner-to-corner -corner rectangle, click one corner, yeah, I can now highlight those lines here. So let's say I want, I've got a half-inch thick uh, board that I'm connecting. So typically, that's probably going to be about 3.5 inches um, wide. Now it's stuck to the points from here to here, so I don't have to worry about setting this other dimension using my dimension tool. Hit my green check mark. And so now I've got a, a sketch here. I might have to click all these pieces to get the whole thing. Um, but if I want to create the board that would stabilize these two legs, I'm just going to go back up here to extrude. Um, blind extrude. So just looking at the sketch, it looks like it's going in the right direction. And I'm going to make that 0.5 inches. And so now i got a board going across these two legs that should reinforce those two legs. And of course, if you were actually building this, this very simple stool, you'd, you'd want to go in and do, uh, you know, supports between the other pair of legs. I'm not going to do that here because uh, it's the same thing that I just did. Like, you can create your sketch on here and uh, repeat it. But you can also use some of the pattern tools. There's a mirror tool here. Um, so if I'm doing like a three-dimensional mirror and I want to take this piece here and I want to reflect it over here, if I'm doing a reflection in three, dimen three dimensions, Instead of reflecting over a line like I did in my sketch, I need to select a plane to reflect over. And so uh, if I were taking this part here and wanted it on the other side, I need to see if I can rotate around to select this front plane. There we go. I select the front plane, and it's going to take this, rec this uh, rectangular prism, flip it over here, and now it's located on the correct side. So there are shortcuts to doing it. You, you don't have to do sketches everywhere. Um, and I encourage you to play around with those. And anywhere you can take advantage of symmetry like that, uh, do so. Uh, so that, that's kind of the basics. I mean, that's 90% of everything you probably need to use with Onshape. There's a ton more features here. Um, there's uh, lots of ways to make things 3D. Uh, Onshape's got tons of video tutorials for you. If you just search up a particular uh, topic, like say you want to figure out how to make something round, a revolve is going to be the way to do that. If you search for Onshape, revolve, uh, you'll find Tons of videos if you just Google that. Um, there are other fe features here. I'm going to leave it to you to play around with those right now. I will probably cover those in depth at some point uh, this semester. But for now, um, this is kind of the basics. Uh, there's lots of stuff here. And honestly, guys, you can do pretty much anything you want to with this software. CAD software is fantastic. So if you got any questions, uh, as always, shoot me an email. Uh, talk to me in class. Let me know.